My guest on the programme, Sean Keane, was raised in a musical family including Sister Dolores and Aunts Rita and Sarah in Carlos Strain near Tume in County Galway. Now with Francis Black, he was a founding member of the group Arcandy. Uh, he soon made his mark in the 1990s with recognition from Irish Music Magazine, The Irish Times, The Independent in London. Now Sean's voice is unique. His range covers traditional Irish folk, pop, blues and country. Now the Irish Cultural Centre at 5 Blacks Road, Hammersmith West 6 uh, will host Sean in concert at 8pm on Saturday 29th of February. Uh, and I'm delighted to welcome Sean. Sean, great to speak to you again. And to you, Jerry. It's good to be talking to you, sir. Indeed. We spoke, uh, well, quite a few years ago, quite a few years ago, uh, on one of your previous tours. Now, Sean, in, in your early years uh, in your family, there were uh, there were singers and musicians. Now, you naturally sang uh, in the Shano style, as uh, did your mother and aunts. Now, throughout your teenage years, you won All-Ireland medals in uh, Fla Kiol competitions and became an accomplished whistle and flute player to add to experience on the Elam Pipes and the Bowron. Now, you spent time working in uh, construction, including in London. When did you realise that music could actually become a career? Well, I didn't really realise that music would uh, would be, become a career. I never really intentionally set out for music to become a career of mine. But it's just one of those things, Jerry. I've been playing music, as you said, and singing songs all my life. And I just love playing uh, uh, music. So I just got invited into, as you mentioned earlier on, Arcady and with Francis Black. And when I lived in London, I was a member of a band called She Gui. And we were all based in London. And that was my first touring band, professional band. So that's the first time I was um, out on the road with a professional band. And we toured in Europe and Ireland and so on. And uh, it, I would go back out, as you said there earlier on. I worked in the buildings and worked engineering, steel fabrication and welding and that kind of stuff. But all the time playing music in the night times. But uh, there just came a day when there wasn't enough time in the day to do both. So I kind of had to make a decision and music won out. And that's, I'm glad I did make that decision because it's a, it's a nice way to, 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 to live away. Indeed, indeed. Now you credit yeah. your you credit your late wife Virginia with uh, having belief in you. She was a teacher, but you said with her help on the management side, uh, you'd uh, move further together. Well, yes, indeed. She was the one that encouraged me to to um, to record my first album. I met up with a man called Arthur McGlynn, sadly, a wonderful guitar player, sadly passed away just a few weeks ago. And he was musical director with Van Morrison for many years and played with a lot of different people. But he asked me, he said, uh, I met him one time in, out in Innisfar on an island off the coast of Galway here. And uh, he says, if you ever want to record an album, then he would love to produce it. So I took him up in his offer and uh, he produced uh, uh, something like four or five of my albums and we played together a lot. But um, Virginia encouraged me to do that. And I said, well, if you manage my the musical career, uh, I go, I'll go recording. And she says, well, I'm a teacher. I know nothing about it. Well, I says, neither do I. So that makes two of us. So off we go. And 30 years later, we're still at it. <laughs> Indeed. Sadly, she passed away a few years ago, though. Yeah. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, sadly, and sorry to hear that. Now, you had a great partnership uh, in, in every sense. Uh, it, it's uh, it's great that although uh, you and Virginia had a young family, uh, you kicked the safety net away and uh, actually took the plunge in music as a professional. Yes, I did. But as I said, it's, it's kind of one of those things that just uh, crept up on me. Um, it, 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 it just became, it became impossible to do the day job and the night job. So... When we decided to go out to music, we were touring abroad quite a lot in Europe and Scandinavia and uh, America and Canada, and indeed in Australia as well. So it was just, it became a full-time job, and uh, I'm still in it, and enjoying every minute of it, I have to say, Jerry. That's excellent. Now, probably in the early days, uh, you couldn't have imagined the scope to which uh, uh, your acclaimed career would extend. Uh, how many solo albums have you actually released at this stage? Uh, I think it's 11, Jerry. I, I, I record them. I don't listen to them from the day they go out of the studio, but I think in counting, I think it's something like 11. Yeah, my last album was at the RT Concert Orchestra, and uh, it's, a, it's a CD called Gratitude, and that, that was released last year, almost two years ago now. So that was my last uh, recording. Right. Superb. Now, uh, you've, uh, uh, that's just one of the many successful collaborations that uh, uh, that you've done. Now, Sean, I understand you're uh, managed now by the songwriter John Broderick. Uh, what opportunities has this opened up? 
Well, it has opened up a lot of opportunities. Johnny has uh, been a poet and a songwriter all his life, although he never worked in the musical business. Uh, he was a special needs nurse and he managed a, a, a centre in uh, Cambridge, just outside Galway. And that's where I met him. I used to go in there and do concerts for the people in there and, and shows and different things. And when he finished and retired from his job, I um, I asked him if he'd managed my career. And he said the same thing as Virginia said. Sure, I'm a nurse. I know nothing about the music business. But, uh, I said, well, I've heard that answer before. So here we go. Right. Well done. Now, you're appearing yeah. in the, in the yeah. Irish... In the Irish Cultural Centre in Hammersmith on the 29th of February. And now this is actually a lovely intimate uh, space. Uh, do you enjoy connecting with the audience in, in, in such settings uh, to get the reaction? Oh, I do. I do. But places like that and the size it is, it's, it's, it's ideal because it's, uh, it's, it's small enough to be personal and they can connect with most people there rather than big auditoriums or so on, which are nice to play as well. But I, there's just something homely and more comfortable about the smaller venues that it just seems to be able to be easier to connect with people. Indeed, uh, I'll have to say the centre is very welcoming. The bar has undergone a, a stylish refurbishment yeah. where uh, friends can meet and relax ahead of the concert shot. Uh, what can people expect? Yeah, it's a place. Indeed. What can, what can people expect from uh, from your act on the, uh, the 29th of February? Well... You know what? I, uh, I I do keep it. Uh, I I don't do use a set list usually. Uh, we we go out and we we kind of have one or two songs that we start off the night with, and after that it goes off in various songs. And it just depends on the mood of the night. I don't like to preempt what the the, the atmosphere in the place will be. Or if I was to decide what songs I sing the day before or two days before, then that will set. Uh, it's all, it will kind of automatically set the mood of the evening. But if I go in with no kind of preconceived ideas as to how the evening will go, it seems to work better because it means that we can now manoeuvre and choose the songs as we go along and the two lads who's with me um, Shane McGowan, a wonderful uh, guitar player from Tupper Curry in Sligo and Fergus Feely, a great uh, um, mando cello player from, from uh, Belfast so the three of us have been playing together for uh, many years and we just uh, decide as we go along what, what we're going to do. And generally, the mood of the evening dictates the material we do. Excellent. Sounds sounds good. Uh, definitely sounds as though the, uh, the performance is sort of uh, uh, fitting into the actual mood in the, in, the, in the hall that night. Well, it is, because I think when you bring a, a group of people together, no matter how big or how small it is, it seems to have a unified energy. Uh, some nights you come out and you say, well, were we flat or were the audience flat or what was that? But some evenings we come out under the great excitement and so on. It's like, um, it, if you don't preempt the night, I think it's, it, it leaves it for more to, more honesty, I suppose. You can, you can work on the energy in the room and with the vibe of the people and indeed the, the humour that the, me and the musicians are in. So it's, uh, it's an, I think it's a nicer way to do business. Indeed. Now, do you, do you tour much? Are yeah. you touring as much as, as uh, you always have these days? I am indeed. I'm actually in, in, in Dublin at the minute. I'm doing some uh, work here in, in RT. And uh, I'm heading down to Leaf. I'm playing there tonight. And um, yes, I'm going to Russia for um, Patrick's Day for Patrick's weekend. I'm going to Austria in May. I'll be in Germany in November and I'll be in France in December. And in between times, I'll be here touring in Ireland and, of course, going over to yourselves in Hammersmith. Excellent. You're a busy lad. Yeah. Busy man. Now, of course, you, you write... No, it's, uh, it's the way I like to do it, yeah. Indeed. Now, you, you write much of your own material and work with others. Now, uh, uh, you grew up, with, uh, as a matter of parents, Matt and Bridie, and uh, uh, you were actually one of eight of a family. Now, in families such as yours, Irish traditional music was kept alive by being handed down through the generations. It, it was a way of life for you in Galway, but... Uh, who have you admired down through the years, past and present, that uh, you feel sort of influences your your work, bar family? Well, I think I think my, my, the, 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 the previous generation of my own family were very special people. My aunt, sweet and Sarah, they had a, an amazing energy about them. They'd be the, the first people up in the morning and the last people to bed at night if there was music going on. Actually, they'd play music for weeks on end if they got an opportunity. The music in the family, it took us... Uh, it was as, as important as the day's work, really. It was a, a part and parcel of the life. And I suppose they knew at the time 
that it was um, kind of weaning a bit and uh, it wasn't popular or uh, profitable to be singing traditional music or songs back in the, the day that they were doing it. But they kept it alive through thick and thin. And now we in Ireland today, I think 99% of the, the children going to school in Ireland today can play music, sing songs or dance or in some way involved in the arts. It's, a, it's an amazing uh, legacy that they have left. Indeed, and a great turnaround, and great to see it indeed in schools today. Now, yep. you, you're also Brilliant. yeah, you're also busy with family. Uh, your two daughters uh, also, and uh, you're writing and the concerts, etc. Your daughters are involved involved in music. No, they both they both can play and sing, but they they chose not to do it as a career. Um, but they love to they love their music and. Uh, but they're both working in various jobs, the two of them are they're actually out working today. So that's what they do. They like to, to, to play their music and sing their songs as a hobby, which is a nice way to do it. Indeed. Indeed so. Sean, old fans and new fans will be pleased to see you at 8pm on Saturday, 29th of February at the Irish Cultural Centre, 5 Black Street, Hammersmith West 6. Tickets are available on Eventbrite. Now, there's a link on our website, irishradio.org. If you've not yet visited the Irish Cultural Centre, it's easily accessible, just a two-minute walk from Hammersmith Tube or parking at the King's Mall Car Park. Uh, do go along, see this excellent performer, Sean Keane, enjoy the friendly atmosphere. And why not get there early and view the free art exhibition Exhibition celebrating the talents of creative Irish women running until the 6th of March. Sean, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Uh, enjoy your date in London at the Irish Cultural Centre, Hammersmith. And to you, Jerry. Thank you very much indeed. Looking forward to it very much, sir.